Okay, Dustin, I, we're going to get started here. Of course, yes. we have some very hot topics. I mean, the, the hottest. The hottest of the hot. Some might say the hypest of the hype. Let's do um, it. But I want to start with this t-shirt. Yes, it says hoes it mad. It says hoes are mad. That's right. Okay. And, and it has um, a visual of our vice president, current, Madam Vice current President. Current vice president. Right, soon to be president. Some might say. Um, Kamala yeah. Harris, and she's laughing and smiling. The thing is yeah. that they hate Dripping about her. Dripping with diamonds. Mm -hmm. Rolls Royce is just to add a little mm. Yeah. It is designed with the motif that some may associate with the No Limit Records album much covers. It's giving No Limit. Yeah, absolutely. The jewel toned font mm -hmm. letters. That's right. You know, we have to remind people that there's an undercurrent of blackness here well, that cannot be is, ignored. Is it even under? Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. at this point, it's just hello. You know, so well, that is exactly it. That's exactly what we're going to start with. That's right, Dan. No one time. Hey, y'all, I'm Ebony K. Williams here, host and attorney extraordinaire. Welcome to Holding Court, where we analyze the very latest in legal headlines, the ones that got all the streets on it. You know what we do? We dig deep into how the courts impact the culture. We break it down, going straight from gavel to your news feed. And every week, we keep it 100. Right, Dustin Ross? That's right. All right, y'all. Let's hold some court. So let's go to a week, just about a week ago. Mm-hmm. We were all somewhere. I was at brunch with some um, new lady friends, some other single moms by choice, some black okay. ladies. It was really community. Cute. Building community, mm -hmm. as we've talked about. Love it. When all of a sudden, all of our phones started to go off with notifications saying that the current president, Joe Biden, is uh, not running for mm -hmm. re-election. Dustin Ross's first thoughts. Um, not surprised. A few of my friends in D.C. and in those circles have kind of hit me to what was coming. Mm -hmm. Per conversations we've even had on this show, Absolutely. I was not surprised at all. But I was excited because I knew what that meant. So you, so okay, because mm -hmm. this is important, and I believe that you, you dig per your mm -hmm. conversations, relationships, and really just your foresight, Dustin. Because a lot of folks immediately, because it was like about a five second delay between when Biden said "I'm not running" and then endorsed Kamala Harris right. as vice president, and and those five seconds allowed some people to get extraordinarily spicy. Yeah, it did. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. well, she's not going to be bypassed, and da da da. da. Everybody, let's just take one big collective. <sighs> How woo -sa, -sa. And she's absolutely not being bypassed. So Kamala Harris is now the presumptive nominee mm -hmm. for the Democratic nomination for the presidency of these United States of America. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a good thing to say. It's a very good thing to say. And yeah. it's a good feeling around it right now. Mm -hmm. It's very reminiscent to me of when Barack Obama a young ran lad, for president. A young lad mm -hmm. with a funny name. Mm, Barack Hussein. Obama. Hussein Obama. Okay. Yeah. So it's interesting. I, I do want to, I do want to frame it this way from me, Dustin. I was one of the, the, the many, I think at the time it was 3000 black women. We had signed a petition saying that we actually were riding with Biden. We mm -hmm. was, we were, we were still very much plug up the IV, put, put the hydration mm -hmm. fluids Whatever in the electrolytes. <laughs> and I, and I'm a, I want to just frame for some people who might be confused where that sentiment from black women was, was coming from. Okay. Because I'm telling you where it wasn't coming from. It wasn't coming from a, a doubt or a, a disbelief in the capabilities of Kamala Harris. Mm -mm. Never. What it was coming from, what you, you've got black women, Dustin. We've been black women our whole lives. Mm -hmm. And sadly, I, I believe that there's just some innate skepticism mm -hmm. coming from us that not just the country's ready, because I agree that's a false paradigm because the country ain't been ready for shit mm -hmm. progressive as it relates to black Americans. But but just we, we just really want to see our sister. And for some of us, that's literally whether it's our sorority sister, yeah. our link sister, our Howard sister, whatever mm -hmm. that is. We want to see the current vice president who many of us, myself included, as a baby lawyer, we've been following Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris is not new to us. Mm -hmm. You know, I lived in California when she was running for and successfully elected as the attorney general of okay. the state of California. First woman of her kind to first black person to do so. Then, of course, there was her running for the United States Senate seat, mm -hmm. which she won. Then, of course, you know, so Kamala Harris has has. First of all, it's uh, worth noting she's never actually lost anything she's been on the ballot for. Let's, I'm going to say that one more time. Right. Thank you. She's actually not lost anything she's ever been on the ballot for. So all of this narrative about is she a good 
candidate. Well, I don't know. What do you call somebody that's never lost? Right. When they were on the ballot. <laughs> the best candidate. Undefeated. <laughs> somebody might say it's undefeated. Yeah. Anyway, so this was never about doubting Kamala Harris. I just mm-hmm. want to say that plain, Dustin. This was really about us wanting to see when she ran. Because there's always been a she's going to be at the top of the ticket for, for most black people and most black women and, and other women, which we'll get to the other women in a minute. Mm-hmm. 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 We wanted to be in best position. So hindsight 2020 i want to say that i think this was actually the best way for her to get to the top of the ticket i I think yeah i think i don't want to be too pessimistic d but i think this was maybe the only way yeah she was going to get to the top top of the ticket because i think a primary would have we saw this this Mm -hmm. is why i said she's undefeated when she's been on the ballot of course we know she ran in 2020 she withdrew her campaign relatively early she did not make it to the ballot because she saw that at that time Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. When everything was really about police reform, mm-hmm. a real dismay of prosecutors and that type of element of criminal law, that that was the wrong time mm-hmm. to be running for anything mm-hmm. as a prosecutor. So it didn't go anywhere. That's but a now great it's, a, point, it's a, absolutely it's a new day. It's a new day when we've got somebody convicted thus far of 34 felonies with several more charges remaining. We're talking about, of course, Donald Trump on the other side. There is no better time. Mm-hmm. No, but, you know, you talk about politics, Dustin, really being about, and pardon the patriarchy here, a man meeting a moment. People oh, talked about sure. that with Obama, right? The mm-hmm. man met the moment. Okay, well, in this moment, the woman, the woman is meeting the is moment. meeting the moment for sure. Perfectly. All right. So that's a little bit of a diatribe. We're going to get into that. Of course, we're not having this episode without honoring and taking a moment to just grieve the loss and also acknowledge the significance of Sonia Massey, mm-hmm. who was shot and killed tragically, aggressively and totally unnecessarily. Uh, by law enforcement. I know it was the the National Day of Grieving Mm -hmm. yesterday, so there were many different ceremonies held all across the nation. But what I really want to talk about is is the fact that what's going on legally, of course, with the horrific deputy that uh, has been charged with murder. We'll break that down. But also connected to our last story on the docket today, which is the policy piece. And we always want to talk about solutions here on Holden Court, right? So now how do we connect... This political moment of Kamala Harris now running for the presidency, we've got the disgusting, tragic, triggering, on-camera killing of this young black. Yeah, because he's certainly charged with murder. Savage killing of this beautiful young black woman, Miss Sonia Massey. And then we connect that to a recall, of course, for the George Floyd Justing and Policing Act, because this is one of the things where you talk to black voters and black Americans, Dustin. This is one of the top things that that we're wanting Mm -hmm. from whatever, whether it's Biden, whether it's I mean, for those that are still on this Trump train, we'll get to that. Whatever it is, if, if it's not passing the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, it's a problem. Mm-hmm. Period. Absolutely. Let's get started with Kamala Harris. So Kamala Harris, the presumptive nominee now, clinched enough delegates. She will just in a couple of weeks be the official nominee for the Democratic Party for the presidency of the United States of America. She'll be the first woman of color, the first black woman, first South Asian woman to do so. Um, and I think that it's important, Dustin, that a lot of people get out of the symbolism of it because that's not really what, what you're, you're not wearing that T-shirt because of tokenism. No. You're not wearing that T-shirt because, oh, this she looks like me and she looks like not my auntie. All. Why are you wearing it? I'm wearing this T-shirt because she's prepared. Mm. That's why. And because people need to be reminded of that and that that's the reason that people support her. Um there's a lot to that we could say about why we're excited about her, but we're excited yeah, because she represents a return to a sense of some sort of semblance of decorum, some sort mm-hmm. of sense semblance of qualified qualification mm-hmm. and preparedness and, yeah. and being presidential in general. That's what the fuck we're excited about. I'm glad you said it. And and let's talk about the excitement piece. Mm-hmm. Um, you've said it. Several experts have said this is feeling similar to 2008. This mm-hmm. is feeling similar to Barack Obama. And the difference is, I would think, for some people, again, there's so much nay- naysaying and, and, and doom and gloom. Uh, many of us did not know who Barack Obama was mm-hmm. before a and and the, you had to be kind of like a political nerd like myself. Some some of us were introduced to him at the DNC convention mm-hmm. in 2004. But many folks really didn't really know about Obama like that until two years before he ran. Absolutely, I'm you one know? of those people. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, that was the 
profound historic nature of his candidacy. He brought so many new people, especially black people and especially black men to the political ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And many of y'all have remained engaged. So Mm -hmm. shout out to Barack Obama for that part. Yeah. Right. That's not the case with Kamala Harris. We most of we know who the vice Mm -hmm. president is. You know, we've known who our United States. She's only the second woman, y'all. Let's Mm -hmm. let's let's just give it what it's due. There's been to this day, two black women elected, elected to the United States Senate. Carol Mosley Braun and Kamala Harris. That's it. Mm -hmm. Now, we've got a sister running in Maryland right now, um, Angela also Brooks, I believe. Mm -hmm. And she hopes to make it three elected. And we currently have one sister, LaFonza Butler, who Mm -hmm. is serving as a United States senator right now, appointed by Governor Newsom. But when you talk about who got the votes to be uh, statewide elected as a U.S. senator that is a black woman, it's been two people and Kamala Harris is one of the two. Yeah. Okay. so let's not with this narrative of she's unprepared, as you said. Uh, at all. So so that's what we know about that. Now, let's talk about the enthusiasm and the excitement. It's not just a feeling. Uh, you know, follow the money. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about that. So, of course, we're coming off of a week of everybody and their mama and daddy <laughs> having a gathering call to support this candidate. And not just support her in theory, support her in financial resources and support her in Strategy, because that piece mm. is very important. So uh, I want to start with you, Dustin. We we know the first of these calls was black women, mm-hmm. which makes sense. OK, that just makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was about 44,000 of us. Ooh, it was a time. I was about to say I'm about to go aggressive. It was a time <laughs> getting on that call. Yeah. Man, damn. We was. Oh, you got a zoom. You got. OK, I'm on YouTube. OK, we, we, we actually yeah. got on Clubhouse at one yeah, point. Yeah, you know yeah. that? By any means necessary. And you are. You guys are always <laughs> leading the charge with that shit. Yeah. It's yeah. always black women going first. Yeah, we're going to go leading first. Leading the charge to organize. And, 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 and yeah. in this case, I believe we were happy to do so mm-hmm. uh, because it just made sense mm-hmm. this time. So we did that 44,000 strong. We raised about, I think, one point between one point five and one point eight million. Mm-hmm. Um, so Incredible. Close, yeah, it was great. And then we were very happy, not surprised, very happy to see the brothers turn around within short order. Yeah. And have a black man's call. You were on that call. I sure was. Tell me about it. I've been on two calls. So the call was mm-hmm. led by um, or organized by Emil Wilbekin. Everybody knows Emil and his incredible Absolutely. record of work. Absolutely. Shout out to Native Son. Absolutely. And for sure. And a um, friend of our show, Bakari Sellers. Right. He organized Absolutely. that call as well. Roland Martin was influential he in was. that call. So there was a lot of people, a lot of voices um, that were impactful, just mm-hmm. organizing and I like the, men. Even say those three names, right? Yeah. Like that is a diversity of an intergenerational call. Yes. An intergenerational call did of take black place. men. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and and I, you know, I know it was off the record. Our call was off the record too. But mm-hmm. what can you tell us? Because mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you a little bit about our call that I believe has, you know, front facing this enough to, for that to be safe. Well, yeah. Tell us a little bit about your call. The I first think call. The, the men that were on that particular call understand the assignment for black men right now when it comes yeah. to what we present at, as our level of being astute. In mm-hmm. regards to what's going on in our support of Kamala Harris, there's a lot of negative conversations being had right now. Absolutely. And everybody that was on that call kind of understood the charge to to change that and, and to put this message out that yeah. black men are absolutely in support of Vice President Harris and willing to organize and do the work. So I thought it was great that that I'm going to tell you what place. I loved about it on the outside looking in mm-hmm. is it deaded a conversation immediately, mm-hmm. Dustin, and it's fucking tracks it deaded a conversation of divisiveness between black men and black women when it comes to this election there you go it literally did because that had been slow brewing and fed for Mm -hmm. a long time to the point where and i get it i i I very much so think there is some value in black men having their own unique electoral demands Mm -hmm. and their own unique positioning um but this narrative that it started to build up that you know there's too much concern in the Democratic Party for black women and it is at the peril of black men which is ridiculous um, yeah and 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 that so many black men are for Trump and yeah yeah fuck all that mm-hmm. what y'all did on that first call of black men of all again generations all sexual orientations mm-hmm. all geographic locations y'all came together I think 55,000 mm-hmm. something like mm-hmm. that strong also raise upwards of a million dollars for Kamala Harris in a few hours. Black men said we are protecting this black woman. That word was used. 
protecting this black woman. We are supporting this black woman and not just because she's a black woman, because she aligns with the things that black men need. want and need from this election cycle. Mainly the economics. Simple. Yeah. Mainly the gun safety piece. Mainly making sure that black men can provide for their themselves and their families. Mm-hmm. That is that is the policy piece. We can get to that in a minute. So after the black women did their thing, the black men did their thing as a collective. Mm -hmm. Then there were excellent pocket groups. I saw uh, Southeast Asian women for Mm -hmm. Kamala Harris. Mm -hmm. Shout out to them. I saw Hispanic women for Kamala Harris. I saw, of course, shout out to the human rights campaign out for Mm -hmm. Kamala Harris. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And then there was a black gay and queer call for Kamala That's Harris. Right. That was also a mill. Yep. Okay. That was also a mill. And David Wilkins. Johns. David and Johns. And Richard Ms. Fowler. Lawrence, Vince Lawrence. Lawrence. Yeah, a lot of people. A lot of people. A lot Dustin of, a lot of Ross. That's I'm right. going to say it. We were all on that call. Mm-hmm. And um, and I actually turned down the opportunity to be one of the featured speakers on the call. Right. Because I just wanted to listen. I hear that. Okay. I just wanted to listen. Can we I check did, out I the even, value of that? Sometimes we want, can I, have a listening tour situation. I just wanted to listen because yeah. this, I recognize the importance of, of using our voice in this election cycle. Yeah. And I wanted to take in that call first and then figure out another step. They're going to so be sub- there's subsequent. There's going to be so much more to do. I think I already saw there's a, a second uh, black men's call coming up mm-hmm. soon. And so now let's talk about a group that I was having a spirited debate sidebar conversation with one of our industry colleagues. I cannot wait to hear you talk about this. I I didn't reach out to you about it. Right. Because I wanted to have the conversation here. Here. Yeah. And I talked about the significance that white women will play. Mm-hmm. Now, it brings me no joy. <laughs> no, I'm, and, and, and shout out to white women, but it brings me no joy to say that. That is not coming from a place of centering white women, as is way too often done in global and American society. Um, In fact, as you know, and y'all know, jurors, I'm all about the work of decentering a whiteness, period. Mm-hmm. But the reality is, if we are at all serious, mm-hmm. let me be very serious right here. If we at, are at all serious, Dustin, about getting Kamala Harris to the White House, that requires Kamala. And by the way, not just because we just love Kamala so much either. Let's be clear. Shout out to her. But this is about getting someone in the Oval Office that will be advancing the political, the economic and the social policies to better life for black folk in America. That's the that's piece. it. That's the piece. That's it. This is not a fan club. Yep. This yep. is not. That's that's what Boule is for. Mm-hmm. Shout out to the Soul Wars. Mm-hmm. OK, that's what National Assembly is for. Shout out to the Lynx, our honorary member. When we just celebrating Kamala for the sake of celebrating Kamala. Mm-hmm. This what y'all are hearing, what y'all are seeing when you're seeing these millions of dollars. I think I read two hundred million dollars mm-hmm. have mm-hmm. been raised all across the board, including the seven million from the CEO of Netflix. Netflix. Hello. Right. Won't give me the boycott. Monique. That's it. That's it. You know, um, I think. 180,000 whatever it is it's just it's insane support. between the, the support and the the the, the cash mm-hmm. fundraising this is not about a coordination this is not Miss USA or Miss America about Kamala Harris mm-hmm. being the, the chosen it girl mm-hmm. this is about her being best positioned to advance our positioning mm-hmm. so, so this, just so that we're clear because I, I think some people are confused about that now yeah Sadly, back to white women in order for her to to Kamala to get into the oval. I need you to remember one number, three digits, mm-hmm. 270. Mm-hmm. OK, 270 electoral votes are required. And I'm going to keep coming back to that. Well, we got 100 days left, because mm-hmm. if we're not talking about 270 electoral votes, if we're not talking about the following seven states. Pennsylvania, Michigan, Michigan, yeah, North Carolina, Wisconsin, mm-hmm. Arizona, Nevada. What about Georgia? Georgia. Yeah. That is the yep. other one. Georgia, Georgia has now is now swingy. It's a I'm gonna call it a swingy state. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Stacey Abrams. Shout out to Stacey Abrams. Shout out to uh Senator Warnock and Senator Orsoff. Mm-hmm. Um if it ain't about those seven states, y'all, it, it, we're, we're really not serious, mm-hmm. okay? Because we know what California is going to do. We know what New York is going to do. We probably know what Illinois, New Jersey mm-hmm. are going to do. What we really need are those seven states. And we need all of, uh, some of them are just must wins. Mm-hmm. It's going to be hard for Kamala Harris to win this election without Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Period. It's going to be hard for her to win it without Michigan. 
And we, we know what the sentiment is there. We'll get to that, uh, if not today, in future episodes around the geopolitics mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that have a lot of people feeling away. Yeah. Understandably so. So listen, let's do the reverse engineering. So this is the strategy piece that will require white women, period. So we know in both 2016 and in 2020, over 50 percent of white women in both of those elections voted for Donald Trump. That happened. So if they are not to do it again, and listen, some of those white women are going to because that is in their interest. So I really want to kill this narrative, y'all, that white women are operating against their interests. Why? Wow, they're so dumb. They're op- they're voting against their interests. Um, no, that's actually a lie. There is a segment of white women that's apparently a very large one that says that their best chance for their own advancement and the advancement of their children is to hold tight to the value of whiteness and the value of the patriarchy essentially said for them to hold tight to the J.D. Vance Trump type of white male power structures of America and ride those coattails to the wheels fall off. That is a legitimate factual analysis for a large segment of white women. Hmm. But here comes the good news. About being black American dad. Now, here's the good news. There's also another segment of white women. Yeah. And they are also sizable. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's not, they're not outliers. Because I know these white women. These are some of the white women that I went to law school with, that I practiced with, mm-hmm. that I do business, that we all, mm-hmm. these are the white women that, that probably many of us encounter on a day to day, either through work, uh, our kids maybe are in schools with them, whatever. And these white w- women are none too pleased with the current narrative of white womanhood in America that says that y'all are to blame for the current state of affairs. Mm -hmm. I'm not giving them any pity. They're not respectfully, for the most part, asking for it. And that's why we saw a hundred and I think 80,000 white women on a call. Mm -hmm. They really, 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 really broke Zoom. That's why you saw, I think it was very close to $8 million raised by white women just this past week on one call. I think it was Connie Britton, Pink. Mm -hmm. And these white women, Dustin, are saying, you know what? We have fucked up Mm -hmm. for the last at least two election cycles. And let us own that. Let us reflect on that. And let us do better. Yeah, for sure. And the organizer of that call, um, the white women for Trump call, which is so funny. Oh, to was say. there a white women for Trump call no, too? Not for Trump. Oh, 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 Lord, for, oh white, white, white women for uh, white Kamala. White women for Kamala Harris. I'm yes. glad they called it that, by the way. I'm glad yes. they didn't try to no, just it's, call it, it, it it's women. Blatant. It needs to white be white women. women. Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. Um, the organizer, in every tweet that I saw and in every written correspondence pertaining to the call, they thanked and highlighted the win with black women. Or, Absolutely. Or black we, we, we showed them how to yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah. They credited that, which I and thought And they needed was good. to do that, too. Right. Yeah, they needed to do that, too. Because it was important. Um, and so, yeah, so, so you know, the white women for Kamala Harris piece is important. So I was having this spirited debate with a, a, a black woman colleague in the business. And, you know, she said, well, I don't trust these white women. Ab. I said, no, let's be, be clear. This is cannot be mm-hmm. about trusting white women mm-hmm. any more than it could be about trusting any of these categories mm-hmm. of groups, if we're going to be honest with you. But what it can be about, what it must be about is naming this on the front end because let me tell you what I'm not interested in Dustin I'm not interested in another pink pussy hat regalia mm-hmm. they showed up mm-hmm. in 2016 you know y'all y'all did what y'all did as white women and then after the fact we want to be horrified shocked and in awe and we want to put on our pink fuzzy pussy cat hats and we want to march down the streets of DC yeah um, that goes for a lot of you black Christians too yeah it goes for a lot of folks Tina period. Campbell a lot of people um, the other one that you I didn't even know Kimberell that one oh well Kimberell who yeah, and also um Kimberly Elise right oh Kimberly Elise yes TT that's why she got shot first that's right and she's always crying in movies and grinding her t- gnashing her teeth weeping and gnashing her teeth every movie we see her in it was a horrible that really mess pissed me off when yeah. she did that you talk I, you hit me today I yeah. didn't know she was a part of that a mess but yes so this is where this segment of white women particularly again in those states Nevada, you know shout black women going always black women we 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 are very consistent we are the most dependable base of the democratic party followed very closely by the way by black men i don't mm-hmm. know why that piece is always lost 
96 percent of black women vote for democrats most of the time and it's like 82 percent of black men Mm -hmm. it's very close but these white women this is the 50 50 split so if we can convert even 10 15 more percent of them and make that 65 percent maybe 70 percent of white women voting blue that's your difference maker Uh, absolutely and the great thing is although it's going to take strategy and an organized effort Trump and Vance are going to give that to they're going to give these white women voters exactly what they need to make that pivot. Yeah. With their language, as you can see. Oh, yeah. they mad. Jennifer Aniston mad as hell. Now, what I want to call on Jennifer Aniston to do and those that are pissed like her, they mm-hmm. mad about this cat lady shit. Mm-hmm. They're mad about being childless mm-hmm. I and mean, not mad about being childless. They're mad about being demonized, mm-hmm. ridiculed and ostracized by their either choice or circumstances to not be mothers Mm -hmm. as rightfully they should be. But now I need Jennifer Aniston and those like her to go a bit further and not just make it about a beef with J.D. Vance, make it about supporting Kamala. Mm -hmm. Kamala should have this same damn Mm T-shirt you have on. I mean, Mm -hmm. um, Jennifer Jennifer Aniston should have this same damn T-shirt that you have on right now, Dustin. I agree. Yeah. So let's go ahead and and go all the way Mm -hmm. there. And that kind of reluctance. Stand on it. Yeah, I'm not I'm not trying to pick on Jennifer Anderson. I'm just saying that is a perfect example of like the double dutch of it mm-hmm. all. OK, so so you know that this ain't it mm-hmm. because this man is telling you what he thinks of you and women like you. So now go, come all the way over. That's right. Strap up your Tiva sandals. That's it. And stand on it. Yeah, that's what you that's need it. To do. That's it. Go go and get your full Dyson bl- blowout and come all the way the fuck over here. And be with the white women for Kamala. That's it. That's really what it's about yeah. now. And I'm just going to go through a few issues and then we're going to move on to the next story, y'all. Because again, you know, this can't be just about, and it's not just about President Silk Press. Because, cause, you know, and, and the coconut thing, and I get all that, and that's social media, and that's but that has value. Serious. That has value. But but let's, y'all coming to holding court for a reason. Right. So let's talk about what we're really voting for Kamala for, right. why there's excitement, why people are giving out the bag mm-hmm. for Kamala. It's because on the issues that are most important to black people, and they might surprise you, number one, economics. Black people are very concerned, Dustin, about the wages, about our income in this country. That is the number one issue is black people want higher incomes and higher wages. Number one issue, pocketbook issue is the economy, stupid. As some uh, somebody was saying in the past, shout out to Bill Clinton on that. Second, gun violence. Mm-hmm. We're going we're gonna to get right into it in this second story. This is the co- correlated piece to the, the tragic killing some might call it murder of Sonia Massey. That's what I'm calling it. Yeah, absolutely. That's what well, I we'll probably think. all be able to call it that with great confidence, hopefully, when if, if and when this system does what it's supposed to do, we just convict this asshole of murder because that Not is what charged. he's charged with. Convict. Yeah, that's what, that's what I say. Convict. Okay. So that gun violence piece, second biggest piece of legislative concern for black America. And third, this is going to surprise some people, but it's not surprising me because I really have always been like, this is my chief issue, to be honest. Education, failing schools. For sure. We're tired of our children going to failing schools, Dustin. We're tired of being literally redlined Mm -hmm. into failing schools that put us on a trajectory for low incomes Mm -hmm. because that correlation is obvious. That's where it starts. When you've got black boys in particular being suspended at like a 70% rate compared to their white counterparts as early as third grade. And black girls also suspended six times more frequently than our white girl counterparts in elementary school. What kind of outcomes do you think we get when we get to high school? You got a situation where many black boys have dropped out, do not have the attendance records to complete their high school education. And now we're already deviating off of a path of prosperity. So those are the issues. Income, low wages, gun violence. We're tired of seeing our children, our mothers, our brothers, our wives, our husbands shot and killed in the streets, often by law enforcement. But even even in the community violence piece, we're, we're, we're disgusted and tired of it. And we're tired of these failing ass punk ass schools. Very tired of it. You know what's not on that list at the very top that I think a lot of people thought would be abortion. Mm. Now. That's, of course, y'all, not to say that black women do not 
concern ourselves, rightfully so, with reproductive rights, safe and, and viable and legal abortions in this country. That is extraordinarily important to black women. But I'm, I'm just framing this because people... People will look at Kamala Harris and they'll say, well, she's going to be the president of this. She's going to own the abortion piece. She's going to own the um, maternal uh, mortality piece. Mm -hmm. She's been fantastic on those issues. She will continue to be. That will be a part, yes, Dustin, of attracting and retaining the white women pussycat regalia Mm -hmm. to the, 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 the team. But let's be clear. It's about these issues. Because, again, going back to the 270, y'all, that she must have from the Electoral College to win, you're not necessarily going to win Nevada on abortion because it's it's too purple of a state. Yeah. It's going to be hard to win Arizona on maternal health. You got to speak to these pocketbook issues. It's very important. I would be interested to know what the list of important issues was on that white women for um, Kamala Harris call. Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm I'm not a white woman, so thus I was not on the call. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but but either. neither you either. <laughs> but I, I have tried to do some peeking and poking because okay. I'm very curious mm-hmm. because I know y'all showed up with the bag and that's good. One of my colleagues, she's so funny. She she said, um, yeah, because Karen gonna let you know she's still the manager. Ooh ooh ooh. And this is the call she's going to take. Yeah, we would like to speak to the man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Karen wow. going to let you know. That was very nice, black women. Thank you for charting the way. But we are still the manager. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay, quite frankly. So with that said, I'm very curious, too. I said, you know, are they stra-? – apparently there was strategy talk, and they Good. were talking about this. This is why we're seeing even in Florida there's some little – The villages. Yeah, there's yeah. This, 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 you know, conservative community called the villages, and they was out there with their freedom, freedom. Mm-hmm. I can't – listen, baby. Blasting, and everybody was so shocked because it's typically MAGA country. Very MAGA. And it looks – they look mm-hmm. like MAGA mm-hmm. constituents. So, listen, again, this is not about getting excited. This is not about hype. This is about looking at the shift in strategic policy alliance. And I think the more Kamala Harris talks about jobs, the more Kamala Harris talks about incomes, Dustin, the more Kamala Harris talks about revising the LIFT mm-hmm. Act, which mm-hmm. is essentially, uh, since all y'all want to be so excited and all the hip hop community want to be, not all of them, but you know, these little little dusties, excited about these Trump stimmies. Mm-hmm. Okay, what was that? $1,200, $1,500? Kamala Harris was talking about putting 6,000 bands. $6,000. I guess it's six bands. Yeah, it would be My bad. bad. A band is a thousand. I know. Shut up. You know, Auntie <laughs> S is old. <laughs> Ashley in the back laughing. <laughs> so it told me to act my age. Well, bitch, I'm 52 in my head. Um, <laughs> uh, um, six bands mm-hmm. in the form of a of a credit refund. Mm-hmm. She's also proposed, and these are real life proposed legislations, y'all. She ran on this in 2020. Why not bring it back? She also wants to talk about a rent credit. Anybody that's spending more than 30 percent of their income a month on rent, they get a refund check. So this is this woman is not a, is not above putting the bag back into the hands of the American people. She's got to go. It's got to be but the she, right she, handoff. It's got to be the handoff. And she's she's got to talk about it a lot. And I'm mm-hmm. not saying she's not. But I'm saying as as I see her more and more, we got 100 days, mm-hmm. which in a way is a liability. But in a way, it could be a benefit mm-hmm. because now we don't have to hold people's attention very long at all. So just put it on the line. I think this was the perfect setup to see her have a successful run at the presidential campaign. I actually campaign. think so, too. It was. It was. You got to visibly see a transition, right, from Joe the Biden. The handoff. To, you got to see the it's like handoff. like in the Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> and it, and it, it, it made a lot of people, I don't know, it just, it just made a lot of people believe in her as the nominee. Yeah. The way that it happened. I'm glad it is a, a short period of time. Condensed. People, yeah. I like this condensed time. People are encouraged to, you know. Be fired up, like they say, right? Fired up and ready to yeah. go. We're going to bring back all of those hope and change and all mm-hmm. that. But but because she's more of a granule politician than mm-hmm. Obama, mm-hmm. Obama's very much hope and change and blue states and red He's very thematic. Mm-hmm. And that's a part of his political success. Kamala is a different candidate. Kamala is a different political leader. Kamala is a nuts and bolts in terms of the way she even presents, mm-hmm. the more specific she is with she talks policy, the more effective she is. Obama, I would say the opposite. The, the more broad stroke 
Mm-hmm. We hear from Obama. The more visionary we hear from Obama, the more we're bought in. With Kamala, let's let's talk about this. Let's talk about the six thousand dollars you're gonna put back in the pockets of Americans, each couple, through the Lift Act. Let's talk about. Well, let's just go ahead and get to it. George mm-hmm. Floyd Justice and Policing Act. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's one of the co original co sponsors, co writers of this legislation, and it's very, very, very important because this is the this is the nuts and bolts of what she has earned her credibility with is understanding the, the 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 nuances and the realities of the criminal justice system so y'all y'all know that this beautiful black woman uh sonia massey you know just a mother and all these things and of course we know you don't have to be those things for your life to matter but this, let's just frame who she was as a person is no worthy yeah to paint a picture to, to literally paint yeah. the picture we've heard many of us have heard her father Mm-hmm. Many, many times now uh, on television, speaking lovingly and powerfully about his daughter. We've seen her son yeah. speak powerfully and movingly about his mother. And of course, Kamala Harris has been in touch with both of those individuals from her family, along with Joe Biden, to show their condolences. I don't know if they've heard from Trump yet. You know they haven't. I know. I just teed it up like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. You know they but, haven't. But I'm saying that for everybody that re- and it's not really our jurors that are saying it, but for those that want to talk about how he's so pro-black, because that narrative somehow, some way, I'm going to say it was out there. I think that's changed just in a week. Oh, absolutely. It's changed in a week. And honestly, it's terrible that this happened with Sonia Massey in just just the full stop. Sure. It's terrible that this happened. Of course. But it is it is spotlighting and highlighting spotlighting and highlighting. And the, it, it's timely. Yeah. When you consider the language that Donald Trump has been using at his political rallies, that is is. any opportunity he has to get in front of the microphone where he talks about giving cops immunity. Listen, full immunity. So this happening right in the middle of that conversation coming from him is a is the way it's not an accident. Yeah, it's not an accident. Yeah. So understand who this man really is. You know, y'all can sit up here and again talk about these Timmies and these gold sneakers and all this bullshit. And what was he saying that he? Now that he's convicted, black men understanding. You know, this man is telling all of us what he thinks of us as black Americans. That made me want to throw up. Yeah. When I heard that, the fact that now that he's a convicted felon, he's supposed to be a relatable. To me. He's relatable to black to you specifically as a black man. Get the fuck out of here. So yeah, Sonia Massey shot and killed. This was just after the Fourth of July weekend, and this is the worst part from from me. All of it's horrific, like you say, full stop. In her home hmm, makes hmm. me think about um. The brother, um, Botham Jean, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. shot and killed in his home. So this is this is not even Hell, about Brianna. black people. Breonna Absolutely. Taylor. Breonna Hell. Taylor. Oh, my God. In her bed, in her home. So now Resting. we're at a place, y'all, that black people don't even get to leave our front doorstep without the inherent risk of being shot and killed in our own home. This woman was shot and killed in her own home after she reached out to law enforcement for protection because of a suspected intruder. And she, because she, like the rest of us, know this perilous dynamic of being black with law enforcement engagement, first thing out of her mouth is, please do not hurt me. Mm-hmm. That's the first thing this woman says. Ends up shot and killed. My God, you cannot make it up. What the fuck? Yeah, so, you know, we want to acknowledge that this is, is is likely triggering for many of y'all. So if you, you're really not into another story of the killing potential murder of a black person in america feel free to come back to this part of the episode when when you are ready for that i did not watch this video did you watch the video i did okay wish how was I that for you i you wish, wish i hadn't had. watched it yeah i could see that yeah i just knew i, I didn't need to see what i knew was on mm-hmm. it because we've just seen it too much it's but, horrifying yeah yeah horrifying but, and at the same time there is something to be said for actually continuing to watch it because we don't want to get desensitized mm-hmm. and we don't want to make this too normal mm-hmm. so I, I think either choice is what's best for you we know that thank god this is the only thing that has moved differently like going all the way back to trayvon martin dustin there used to be a time where these things would happen they would happen on some type of audio or vi- visual tape and there would still be three, four, six months delay, if ever, charges being brought. Yeah. So the only thing I will say, thank God for the body cam here, because this this officer, quote unquote, was immediately charged. We're talking about this um, sheriff's deputy, Sean Grayson. He has already been indicted by a grand jury on one, two, three counts, murder, 
aggravated battery with a firearm, and official misconduct. And you see all three in the video. Plain you see all day. three. And I wish that we could say that, oh my God, this was unforeseeable, but we know it's not unforeseeable because it has also been reported by CBS News and other outlets that this, uh, you know, of course, he's also been fired because you get fired when you get charged with murder. Let's be clear, because <laughs> some people didn't put it together. Um, this man has a thick disciplinary file. This is not he was not a model officer mm-hmm. who just had a bad day. This is a sensible this this tracks this track literally yeah. tracks. He has accusations of bullying, abuse of power in one year from May of 2022 to 2023. So this is just Basically, last year, essentially, a year, two years ago, supervising officer described him as somebody who was lying on his police reports, operating in official misconduct and having a lack of integrity. This is what another superior law enforcement officer said about Grayson. He's also uh, had to plead guilty not once but twice to driving under the influence. And get this, y'all. This man has served in six different departments of law enforcement in only four years moving him around because he keeps getting into trouble okay so i'm gonna just combine it with our last story here because we you know we, we're talking about all this stuff and it really is all related so one of the aspects one of the most important aspects in my legal opinion of the george floyd justice and policing act is a database to track exactly this type of movement hello okay hello. and again for those that want to reduce Kamala to locking up all these black men. We'll get to that on another day because I'm not even going to spend the time to introduce our conversation of Kamala Harris as presidential nominee on this show with that nonsense. But Mm -hmm. and we will go over her record. Mm -hmm. Let's be clear. We're not going to gloss over shit, but we're not going to dignify the blatant lies, the blatant Mm -hmm. lies. But this database, which was, again, a part of her and Cory Booker Mm -hmm. and a handful of others, original George Floyd Justice and Policing Act legislation is to create a database to track exactly this type of shuffling of bad actors, of bad police officers, of bad sheriff's deputies, you know, like the kind that killed Tamir Rice, Mm. who then just a matter of months later has already been rehired. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So so this is where, you know, I I know some of y'all sometimes get like, I don't know, a little numb or a little indifferent, I'll say, when it comes to these policies and this act and this act. No, this y'all got to look at the the mechanisms of the legislation, y'all, because it, it, it makes a difference, because had this officer Grayson been flagged properly because we had a George Floyd Justice and Policing Act already at play. Miss Massey might be alive today. That simple. And that literal, um, there's so many reasons to support that George form, that George Floyd Police Absolutely. Reform Act. I don't understand why this is not being talked about more mm-hmm. right now, because that's the number one argument against Kamala Harris is that she is a cop. Yep. Top yep. cop. You know, she's going to support the cops when really, if you look at her record. Mm-hmm. Right. And if you look at how the police unions have gone against her in California because she refused to offer the death penalty that part. as a consequence. That right. Part. These are the things that speak directly against and contradict these damn lies that we keep hearing about. Absolutely. Her. So, again, I hate that this happened to Sonia Massey and there's nothing there's we, nothing good about it. Redeemable about it. No, no, we, but we can't it, bring it, this it sister is, back to life. But we can learn. Thank you. We from this learn pattern. From this. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. So you asked. You made a good point, and you kind of asked a, a rhetorical question. But I want to. I want to engage with it, Dustin. Why are more people not talking about this George Floyd injustice and policing act right now? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm gonna tell you who is talking about it: Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Mm. They have have mentioned it in the wake of the killing of Miss Massey, but. Why is it not like on everybody's lips? Because I just told y'all what the three top policy issues are for black Americans and police gun violence is number two. Mm-hmm. So we are concerned about it. So why are you? You're, I think you're kind of kind of trying to get under the hood as to what if we're concerned about it. Why are we not talking and, and mandating vocally this piece, this particular law more? Yeah, this in is this what moment. people want to to hear as a solution Right. To what we're seeing happen. I think people think it's done. Mm-hmm. I think that's the problem. It's when, when when there was a groundswell around past the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act right now, which was like four ish years ago and it didn't happen. I think people kind of gave up on it. I think I people agree. thought it went away. And that's a that's a lie from the pit to hell. So let's talk about the legislative background as to what did happen. It actually passed 
the uh, the the House, the Congressional House, <clears throat> twice passed the House in 2020 and it passed it in 2021, of course, on partisan lines, which is what happens. But it has never gone anywhere in the United States Senate. And we talk about this part all the time on the show, y'all. You can get all the votes in the House, but if you cannot move that Senate piece and you do not have uh, the majority of the votes in the Senate, you will not get any legislative you action. have no movement. You have no movement. It will never see the light of the president's desk. Mm-hmm. So that's how it goes, right? So when when President Biden came out and said, you deliver me a Voting Rights Act, I'll sign it. Well, Congress in the Senate could never deliver him a Voting Rights Act. That's why we don't have one today. Same thing. You deliver me a George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, I will sign it. Well, the House gave him one. The Senate blocked it. So... That's what needs to happen. This needs to be, and and Kamala Harris in this week, in this moment, as you've said, Dustin, is calling for it to be revised right before her death. Shout out to the legendary Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee from the state of Texas. You know, she called upon this to be renewed again. So now I'm looking at you, Tim Scott. You've got a lot of time on your hands. You were passed over for the black job of the vice presidency. You and your teeth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you you and your teeth and your made up for higher uh, fiance. Did you see them lying in that interview when she was uh, talking about how they how he proposed and how they met? Just lying, zero chemistry, like an absolute rug. What? Like, I mean, we we could have cast it better than that. I mean, please, Literally. you know what I'm saying? I, it, it just it was. It Where was, are the headshots and the resumes? It was laughable, but, go but ahead. yeah, he was a major um, obstruction. You know, Tim Tim Scott wants to tout that, that he's. You know, a bipartisan partner with Cory Booker and Kamala Bullshit. Harris and everybody on this. And yet you are one of the main ones, Senator Scott. You know, if we want to just seriously engage with you as a potential aspirant of something progressive here, one of the main ones is shut the shit down. So go back to your constituency, sir, in the United States Senate, where you are the sole black Republican in the United States Senate and make it happen. That's what you whip the votes, Tim Scott. Oh, but you were too busy trying to get chosen. Didn't even get chosen. See, Ain't that about a bitch? And we're laughing at you, by the way. Ain't I hope that he about knows a bitch. that. I think I'm sure he knows. I think he knows that. You know, and it's crazy because I'm, I'm old enough to remember when he had started to form just a little bit of leeway mm-hmm. with certain black personalities. I remember he had a um, fireside chat or something with Charlemagne in South Carolina you know Charlemagne's from South Carolina and so and there were there were a handful of black folks really willing to look engage past the teeth or <laughs> does it say look past the teeth mm-hmm. well they would have the first the first step first things are first mm-hmm. they would just have to start with looking that's past something the teeth you have to accept before you listen to what he has to say <laughs> it's what you're met with that, like you say like, at the onset Correct. Yeah. They're coming at so you. So you had to get past that. And once they got past that, they were actually willing to engage. And listen, I am one of the most pragmatic people y'all will find on these issues. I believe there is nothing wrong with talking. Mm-hmm. But once we talk and you prove yourself to be an obstacle to the actual execution of the policy that black America is saying it's concerning itself with, we have nothing else to talk about. So that's how Tim Scott has landed here. This is not just because he's a Republican. No, people were willing to talk to Tim Scott. Mm -hmm, Let's be mm -hmm. clear. And not just in the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. There were other. Cory Booker was talking to Tim Mm -hmm. Scott. They were there was a time in which they were really supposedly working together to get this legislation passed. And then we saw how unserious Tim Scott was about it. So that's it, y'all. That's a lot for y'all to take in. We're, we're just going to skim the top of the iceberg with this episode, but we're going to be going deeper and deeper and deeper as we get to this election cycle. This is Kamala Harris. Is it? That's it. That's all. We'll be on Veep Stakes watch to watch sure. who she potentially selects as a vice president. I have a pick. I want to hear yours. We'll talk mm-hmm. about that next episode. And then we're, we're going to be all hands on deck in terms of what black America is interested in legislatively. What needs to be done to make some of this stuff happen? And what are the policies? This is the time. Like if it if and when she were to be successful. Oh, it's not enough to just take the silk wrap and the and the press into the White House. No, there there absolutely is a demand. Mm-hmm. There's an agenda. I mean, it's stated in addition to George Floyd, Justin and police, which is for real stated and expected. There's a reparations demand. Mm-hmm. Let's be clear. Mm hmm. 
so we'll get into all of that y'all so listen we just want to thank you guys for joining us uh this was a dense episode we wanted to kind of lay some foundational points we'll all be exploring all of these things much more in the meantime y'all stay safe please stay hydrated yeah it's hot it's It's hot hot out there y'all everywhere in the whole country a a lot of things coming at you a lot of uh, things to get on your nerves so a little water make that feel better. You don't want to be thirsty like them other folks. In all the ways. Mm -hmm. And what you want the people to do, D? Read your terms and damn sure read your conditions. Please. Two times. Holding Court is produced by Uppity Productions. Host and executive producers here, Ebony K. Williams, yours truly, and the Dustin Ross. Executive producer in Dossie McCraw. Our senior producer, Ashley Hobbs. Creative consultant, Jay Kleinberg. Follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and any and everywhere you get your podcast. <laughs>